late November, high on the cliffs of the fjord overlooking Hammerfest, the world's northernmost city. In a few minutes, it will be noon. The Arctic sun barely skims the horizon. Soon, it will set for the last time this year and won't rise again until late January. The next two months will be pitch black, day in, day out. The city nestled in the fjords sinks into darkness. The last rays of light dim over the gas-rich island of Melkoya, an Arctic Circle treasure house. It's a straight shot from here to the North Pole. The area's gas fields are a viable alternative to Russia's. All of Europe envies Finnmark, Norway's northernmost county, and one of the world's richest regions in the world's richest country. Not quite 2 p.m., night eternal has fallen. We head across the bay to Andy Sambi's house. Sambi is a lawyer and a member of one of the Great North's minority groups, the Sami. My people are the Sami people. And um, our presence here is very long presence. And we live in the northern part of Norway, Sweden, Finland, and Russia. We have a common language and we have been living as Arctic people, as an Arctic people, hunting uh, uh, sea mammals, uh, doing reindeer herding, Arctic farming, and also gathering. And our uh, subsist subsistence has been based on that. So here we have been living for long, long times in this strange world that sometimes have the day that never ends or the night that never ends. It's very important uh, for our cosmology, light, because light carries so much information here. It's so dramatic. For example, now when we have the skapma, the, the blue time, some call it the dark time. It's a very dramatic human experience. So for us, this time is a very sacred time. It's a time of meditation. We used to say that this time when the sun is under the horizon, it is the time of thoughts. You have to think on existential things, on practical things, on what you are going to do with your life, what you have done with your life so far. My hero in that respect is a bird that is called the gross bird. During winter time, it's white as the snow. And that is a very uh, amazing thing to be in the same rhythm as, as the nature. And I can even yoik this, this bird, the gross bird. An odd character welcoming these dark hours. It would be tempting now to return to southern Europe and wait things out in a land where winter nights last no more than 12 hours. Wait it out and return in early January. A tad south of Hammerfest, in the city of Tromsø, Finnmark's administrative center, population 100,000. They're in their 45th day of the dark season. One wonders how any civilization could spring up where there is so little light. Early in the morning, on the edge of the city, anywhere else you would see signs of dawn breaking. Here, nothing will change. It will still be night. Night leading into night. It's disconcerting. Many claim that it can cause mentally unstable people to lose their points of reference and slip into psychosis. How do you anchor yourself to reality in perpetual darkness? Do you check the clock frequently to stay moored? Or do you simply let go 
and go with the flow. Yeah, we are living beyond the Arctic Circle, that's for sure. And um, there is a certain uh, variety of climate attached to living here. And um, we may call it um, a little bit extreme at times. Uh, some people may also actually call it exotic. When I ask people what is exotic about uh, Northern Norway, it's particularly the light. But we try to socialize, we try to focus on other things, and we get, get through the dark season as well. Tromsø is somewhat um, unique in the northern part of Norway because it is somewhat also a international city. And uh, it has long traditions for being open towards the world, not only open towards the Arctic as a gateway to the Arctic, but as actually um, in the 1840s it was called La Paris du Nord, the Paris of the North, because here people picked up uh, fashions from abroad and just were walking in the streets as if they were in Paris, so to say. It's, it's a vibrant city up in the north. I think we shall not pathologize living up in the northern part of Norway, even though there might be some sleep disturbances, even though loss of energy, even though, you know, you feel that, okay, this, this, the dark season lasts long enough. Adaptation is very important. We have developed coping skills to live here, otherwise we'll have to live somewhere else. Dr. Kai Krog is one of the world's leading experts in psychoses and traumas of all sorts. As a social psychologist, he rejects the notion light-deprived Arctic regions favor mental illness. Most people get along quite well here, he says. Nevertheless, the city of Tromsø is home to the largest psychiatric research center and hospital in Northern Europe. This is where we met Lise, a regular. She doesn't fare well during the dark season. Her psychiatrist, Dr. Vij Hansen, also questions the widespread idea of seasonal depression. Plötsligt 1985 så får vi servert en artikel fra Washington som ligger like langt siden som Roma, som forteller oss at man blir deprimert når det er lite lys om vinteren. Og det finner vi ganske overraskende, for jeg har jobbet her i over 30 år, og vi har ikke sett at det er noe mer depresjoner om vinteren enn det ellers er. Kommer det da noen eksperter og sier at ja, det er antagelig vinterdepresjon, så får de noe å knytte dette til. Men det er dette med medikalisering, som vi er ganske opptatt av. At vi gjør vanlige forekommende problemer til en sykdom. Og jeg er opptatt av at vi ikke skal sykeliggjøre hvordan vi har det her i Nord-Norge. Det synes jeg faktisk er ganske viktig at folk ikke skal begynne å innbille seg at de blir syke om mørketiden. Vi som jobber i felten, hverken andre praktikere eller psykiatere, har lagt merke til at det er noe mer depresjon om vinteren enn ellers. Faktisk mest depresjon om vår og høst. Teorien går ut på at... Men det er veldig lett å lage teorier på funn, men teoriene går på at om høsten så går det naturlig stå, og den blir trist, og det øker din egen tristhet. Mens på våren er det omvendt, at når våren kommer og alt spiger ut, og fuglene synger og folk blir forelsket, så blir det en større kontrast mellom det som er rundt deg, og hvordan du selv har det. Så det blir mer deprimert av ikke å kunne følge med. Slik at de som kommer hit og er deprimert, de kommer med veldig dype depresjoner. Det kan være folk som ikke har spist på ukesvis, som innbiller seg at de har skylden for ting de overhovedet ikke har skylden for. Det er en psykotisk depresjon, som vi sier. Eller mange kommer, svært mange kommer, fordi de har forsøkt å ta livet av seg, eller tenker på å ta livet av seg. De blir lagt inn for å hindre det å ta livet av seg. Det er en tøffe ting. Ja, det er det. Det er en veldig alvorlig ting vi har møtt med her. Jeg håper jo at det aldri skal bli så sykk. Ja, det vil jeg også. As a psychiatrist, he doesn't think that the unending night here is a cause of depression. 
In his opinion, the matter is more nuanced than others claim. But reading between the lines, this universe of violently bipolar seasons might not be the ideal antidepressant. Alors tu, tu dors beaucoup et dans l'été tu dors un petit peu. C'est comme la, la vie d'un animal, je ne sais pas comment ça s'appelle. <rire> il y a une période qui dort beaucoup, il y a une période qui est... <rire> C'est pas... <rire> Quand j'étais arrivé ici en 1991, ben, j'ai pensé la Norvège comme l'Amérique, la, états unis et Des habitements très hauts, beaucoup de circulation, beaucoup de... comme les films. Ben, quand j'étais arrivé ici, j'étais très choqué. Tu peux penser à un homme qui vient du Maroc avec un merveilleux climat, le soleil. Alors pour venir ici, j'ai vraiment pleuré. J'ai vraiment pleuré. J'ai senti beaucoup de, comment ça s'appelle, la dépression. Cet pays, c'est peut-être le premier pays dans le monde dans la suicide. Tu sais ce que ça veut dire la suicide um... I don't know so much about it, but um, um, of course, we, the police in Tunisia have to deal with uh, um, people that want to take their lives. And uh, for many years, we have a situation on the bridge from Tunisia Island over to the other side. People go to the bridge and uh, jump over. And uh, we have many people that have lost their lives. I think it's uh, something to do with um, the drug abuses. We also have a bridge from Tromsø to another island. And also from uh, that bridge, we have we had experience with that kind of situation. The environment here won't recharge your batteries if they are low and you're frail. It's nearly 11 a.m. and still not a single photon to be absorbed by the eye. Not the slightest particle of natural light. Standing on street corners, our eyes search for clocks. We check our watches for the tenth time in an hour, just to be sure we're not in a dream. Young cyclists race through the streets of Tromso and the longest night on the planet. There is a festive ambiance in the streets. They don't seem to have problems adapting. In the land of Alice and the Mad Hatter, you're better off keeping a clear mind, sleeping during standard hours only, and not having any psychiatric background. The place seems to have more folks with suicidal tendencies than any other place on Earth. We head to the University of Tromsø, pride and joy of the county of Finnmark. Its school of biology has a solid reputation. One of the school's biochemists is conducting advanced research on how people adapt to extreme environments. Despite a rare genetic skin disease, he is fighting the long night with scientific weapons. He is both the researcher and the guinea pig. When I came here the first time when I from southern Norway, I moved to Trump's in 1972, my imagination of the darkness was that I could work all the time, even late at night, and at night even. But realized soon that I didn't function very well. And uh, I said I could go hibernating instead because uh, that I was very sleepy all the time. Uh, then, after two years, I had the opportunity to go back to uh, Los Angeles, uh, where I had been working for three years before. And I realized that I had no problems going back into the Southern California and live there with the uh, normal light and uh, normal darkness. And after four years, I was coming back to uh, Tromsø and uh, got the same problems. So five years ago, I bought this special uh, lamp with the 10,000 uh, lux. Uh, and uh, I used it only for a short time in the morning, uh, at the beginning. But uh, uh, now I am using it the whole day. Uh, and it keeps me uh, If I hadn't, I think I would have to do something. Many people say that there's no problem to live in Trump's, but I think for a few people there is a problem. It's called the sad syndrome, 
seasonal affecting a disorder. In my opinion, this is caused by too high production of melatonin because we don't get no light in the daytime. You need the melatonin uh, to uh, adjust your biorhythm uh, because we see that in a lot of people during the darkness they get very confused uh, by sleeping behavior. They sleep uh, and during the day and stay awake at night. Uh. Melatonin, he adds, is a sleep hormone that is secreted by the pineal gland, located in the center of the brain when night falls. This hormone regulates our waking and sleeping cycles in a normal 24-hour period. In the long Arctic night, melatonin is produced round the clock and can disrupt normal sleep patterns. Some people experience a permanent sense of jet lag. Social psychologist Kai Krog points to the delicate balance of sleep patterns in this sort of environment. If we look at the sleep, sleep is an, an important part of many, of, not to say most, of psychological psychiatric disorders. So let's say that one starts to lose sleep. That can be the entrance to some other developments if one is vulnerable in advance. I know of one specific case very recently, an elderly woman got up in the night to go to the bank. And when she came to the bank, it was closed. And it turned out it wasn't two o'clock during the day. It was two o'clock at night. And she realized she had mistaken the day and the night. like this place. You know, it's like being in southern Italy or Portugal or... I can almost imagine that there is a swimming pool down here that I could throw stones. I can almost hear the sound of it. You can hardly imagine that it's the North Pole outside. And it looks like this, so cozy and nice inside. It might be late already. A lot of people already have their dinner. It's probably time I go and pick up my daughter. Ah, no. Huh. Strange. Strange. You check your watch twice just to be sure that it's not seven in the morning when this deceptive dawn glows over the horizon. Living in this upside down world can give you a headache. Starting in mid-January, there's a respite. Fleeting, but significant. Around noon, there are a few blue hours. Two hours of pseudo daylight, Arctic hues. But dawn is too soon chased by dusk. We're back to black again. Who could refuse a few photons? You do, however, need to remind yourself that it's time for the midday meal and not time for a midnight snack. Adding to the confusion, the weather can switch from snowfall to quasi-stratospheric clear skies in mere minutes. The city lies at the tail end of the Gulf Stream. This explains the fickle climate and the relatively warm temperatures a nearly temperate microclimate a few hundred miles from the North Pole. Nothing is really normal here.
I think it's something we just accept that, yeah, you get tired from time to time, but that's at least how, how I cope with it. I just uh, kind of accept, yeah, I'm going to be tired today, but I just have to try and stay awake and, and get through the day, then I can sleep. Sleep tonight and hopefully won't be so tired tomorrow. But, yeah. Actually, once when I had a French class, I uh, <laughs> fell asleep so much that the teacher asked me to leave. <laughs> <laughs> so it was like, yeah, yeah okay. <coughs> she said I could sleep uh, outside in the hallway or something <laughs> instead of sleeping in the class. It's just. Uh, but it's so exhausting, even at work, after school, and you're like, that's, yeah. So when you get home from school or work, so then you go to sleep then, and then you wake up 10 o'clock in the evening, and then you're like, oh, I'm awake. <laughs> and then you go, you don't get any sleep that night. So that's kind of exhausting. You have to use your spare time. <laughs> Actually, I also, um, at a time I, I wanted to try to stay awake more because uh, it's like, how was it? Eight out of ten part of your life you are sleep <laughs> sleeping. <laughs> you're awake, you're awake. So the two ten of your life you're sleeping and it's like 20 years if you live in 100 years. So uh, it's a lot of time gone to waste. Uh, You've done your mathematics. Yes. <laughs> Proverbial Scandinavian conviviality does indeed chase the winter blues away. Group participation helps you keep your bearings. It stimulates the brain and warms the soul. In any case, it's better to stick to a regular schedule. This far north, it's a matter of survival. If I can only not think about anything, then it feels as if I'm okay. I'm afraid I would feel a lot worse if I tried to do something. snowing again, diaphanous light, and yet the city is animated, modern, western, up to date. The combat against the never-ending night is one with joie de vivre, a miracle of adaptation.
nevertheless, Tromso is home to Northern Europe's biggest psychiatric hospital. The long, dark winter is anything but beneficial to patients here. They hail from all parts of the Arctic Circle, Norway, Sweden, Finland, and Russia. They stay for varying lengths of time. It remains to be seen if walking this kilometer-long corridor helps restore mental health. In this uh, subarctic area, uh, the sun is uh, away two months during the winter, and uh, some people they think this is just okay. It's fine. They appreciate the nature, beautiful differences in the seasons. Some people they think this is too bad. Maybe 10 percent have insomniac problems, and if they also have a sort of a depressive vulnerability, I think some of them also can uh, develop depressive symptoms, almost suicidal. So at the quarter, insofar as that here, we need help. Yeah, and it was for all for all our day that I came in here. Yeah. First time. You have the written master clock in the brain trying to coordinate different bodily rhythms. Because human beings are daytime people, yes. We are not uh, rats. Have you any thoughts about how to live here so high up in the north has affected the disease? Do you think it has any meaning? It's easier to be deprimed. And then it's about to do it. Och lager fasta rutiner när det är mörkt i det. För om du bara låter det flyta helt ut, så kan du ligga och sova hela dagen. Men så jag står upp till fast tid och sitter med lysbehandling och går tur varje dag och prövar att vara aktiv och göra ting på det om man är trött. Men och så prövar jag så prioritera väldigt det och det och kommer man ut. Ja, sovning och sånt. Så. Ja, men nu talar jag som jag sa i sted, så talar jag och sover på blad. Men inte det. För att jag blir så rädd för att jag är så rädd för att bli manisk. Ja. Och jag ska inte sova. Mm. Och det är det är viktigt att sova. Some people are hypersensitive because maybe they have they threshold for registering light and use light as an entrainment a time cue mechanism is not uh, so good as other people. And maybe that could be genetic, and we have to find out this in the bigger research now we will try to, to do in Tromsø. And we also have now the ability to maybe compare some of our data with research groups in Southern Europe. So we can see if the population living on different locations are different. We are living in a research laboratory. We have the, the northern area development with oil, gas, out in the sea, people with shift work, and we know that they maybe come from other countries. How will they react? Many people is coming to Tromsø, living here, mostly because of the undiscovered petroleum resources we think are outside the coast of the north of Norway. Why you, you became the mayor of this uh, city? My work was as, as an engineer in the power plant company here in Tromsø. And then uh, I was more and more interested in uh, politics, national politics and uh, local politics. The last five years, population is uh, increasing with uh, 800 to 1,000 inhabitants every year. And half of it is coming from abroad. 
Finnmark has several good reasons to continue developing psychiatric research. Norway's gold rush has begun. Soon there will be thousands more coming to get rich in the long dark winter. It's best to help them keep cool heads. When we are working, then we have uh, 24 hours duty. You have a lot of power, so you can make a lot of damage if you uh, don't know what you are doing. So. The time is a little bit dark, but it's the best place on the Is it good money to work here? Uh, no answer. <laughs> <laughs> Luckily, not everyone in Finnmark pilots a super tanker or has a job requiring unflagging productivity. Sleepy-eyed Tromso municipal councillors are in their weekly meeting. So, is it the situation? I take it up for the protocol. The situation that we are up in with our friends by Gaza. So here is a two-part thing. It is a powerful statement in regard to the crisis og bekymringer vår for det, den humanitære situasjonen, og det er også en bevilgning i, i aksjonen. Norway's northernmost decentralized county wants to make its voice heard. As they coordinate with the diplomatic office in Oslo, they drink cup after cup of coffee to stave off the rush of melatonin and learn to accept their biorhythms as a regional specificity. There is a certain slack in this system in the winter time, so productivity is not as highly valued as it is the rest of the year. But life goes on. We just keep the daily routines and we go to work and it's dark and we leave work and it's dark. And I can contrast that at workplaces where the professional roles strips you a little bit of your individual characteristics. In California, I was wearing a white shirt and a tie every day. I should behave like a doctor. I should never display any exaggerated emotion or I should always have an answer to everything. And I came back to Norway and I can be myself. So it doesn't mean that one loses the professional piece of it, but I feel that it's adding the who I am and that is okay. And at the same time, the other side of the coin would be uh, that we are all in this together, that we need to pull together to survive. So, and I know communities, small communities, farming communities, where they are very helpful to watch it, each other. They check out each other's needs in the winter time. They keep track of each other, and they balance that towards the autonomous aspects of living. You have your home, you have your family, you have everything, but I'll look after you to some degree to see that if there is anything you need, I will try to be there. So that, that is a fascinating aspect, I, I find, of coping and surviving. Mm -hmm. Do you decide? Do you decide? Wow. People say, how can you grow things in a greenhouse in the north of Norway where you have no sun? Maybe like growing things on the moon. Of course can we do it in the north of Norway without the sun because it's artificial environment in here. We can make it just what plants need. We live here way up north. We need to have the same kind of food that <laughs> the rest of the country are in Europe. We also eat salad and we also put herbs in our food. So we need to, to make it up here and it's nice work for our family and for some people around us. As far as we uh. know, <laughs> in Norway we are, there's, there are no no other greenhouses growing this. I'm the one that grew up here. My husband, he, uh, <laughs> I, I imported him <laughs> from south of Norway. Uh, so my father, he was the inventor <laughs> in this in this uh, god nursery. He was an inventor for us to take over. So he's teaching us. Hilda, more than enough. I think some of you go. 
it's uh, it's looking good. How many are you to take care of uh, your 17 mates? Alt i alt med kommunalt ansatte og skole og sånn, så er vi godt over 100. Uh, men de som er tilsatt uh, direkte av fengselet er vel 73. Kom, jeg visste det, jeg visste det. Jeg har jobbet i, i oppsi, fryktelig mange år og i veldig ulike typer fengsel. Og det jeg merket meg når jeg begynte ny her i Tromsø fengsel, det var den, den gode kommunikasjonen og samholdet faktisk mellom eh, innsatte og, og ansatte. Altså i den grad det går an å si at det er hyggelig å være i et fengsel, så synes jeg faktisk at det er det eh, i Tromsø. Vi, vi har lite bråk, og både innsatte og ansatte framhever faktisk det er en god relasjon imellom. Kanskje det også har litt med, med kultur å gjøre. Og kanskje nettopp på grunn av mørketid og, og de her ekstreme værforholdene, at vi, vi, vi holder mer sammen på et vis, og vi har masse humor, og vi leter etter positive ting i hverdagen, i stedet for å fokusere på alt det triste, trasige, og, og ja, på en måte muligens ligger noe der. Men vi, vi ser jo. Vi ser jo at det er på en måte det er lange vintre, det er mørkt, og det er, det er spesielt... Uh... Og vi finner overlevelsesmekanismer i, i, nettopp på grunn av klima. Mm. Jeg har spent fem år nå i jail. Jeg har fått 11 år for å uh, være uh, en turistguide i Holland. Når du spiller lang tid i jail, har du tid til å reflekte over livet. Men hvis du sitter og fokuserer på situasjonen her, som er fucked, så vil du ha problemer. Because you're locked in a cage uh, like an animal. Huh? And it's dark always outside and uh, in, the, in the worst months it's like one hour, a little bit grayish. The rest is black, pitch black. Uh, it doesn't uh, bother me because I'm, uh, I've been working a lot as a fisherman. And uh, then you're six, six hours at work, six hours of sleep. And uh, when I go to jail in the wintertime, it's sort of going uh, fishing. You, you have to find the positivities in the, the time of the year. Beautiful light we have now. And uh, northern lights, and uh, you're always looking forward to springtime. And uh, I think that's uh, a good thing too. But to live in an uh, environment like this, there has to be something which keeps us, and uh, for sure nature is, is the reason. River, clear mountain river, stand to here in the water, <coughs> midnight sun, you drink from the water, you see the fish swim by your legs. Uh, but these memories of uh, experience we had in nature and of course the beautiful women we have here is um, what keeps us going, yeah? and it's fucking Otherwise, what you have, you're in a rich country, you have content. That's not, that's nothing. What a life. A4, what is that? Boring, huh? Very boring. Ja, det er helt satt ut. Det var så tom luft her inne at det er noe feil med ventilasjonsanlegget også. Det er ikke opp og går, for det skal være liv i her. Adventurer. 
I think to understand Northern Norway, one has to understand the um, dichotomy between autonomy, my hill, my mountain, the feeling of that one has nature and you has availability, it's not crowded. When you are on the mountaintop and you see nobody, that might fill you with happiness. <laughs> and at the same time, we realize that we are all in the same boat. We become who we are in interaction with the um, environment we live in and the communities that we are part of, informing the rules of socializing, informing how we view the world and how life should be. So I think uh, the different communities develop different coping skills. Tromso, a city on the edge of the world, a human community, a culture, a specific worldview, a world in itself, a civilization on the scale of a small city. Darkness is its natural border, a micro-civilization, in any case, a rarity. Are you going to like it? Hallo. Hey. Hey. So, how do you think it's going to be a job here? Fantastic. Yes. Is it like a night? No, Rosen must have a night also in winter, so she gets a night in six hours. Vad du tror om denna gick förbi? Nej, tvivl om den, för den har inte så stort på den, men den var lång. Ja, det där var jättebra klipp. Och sån klar då att lägga den med de andra. Now it's time for us to go back to Hammerfest, the small city nestled in the fjords, a city with gas fields, the city where the Sami live. Come January 21st, around 12 noon, the sun will rise over the horizon for the first time in more than 60 days. Here in the far north, it's celebrated as a celestial event. When we come to the point where, where you can see the sun for the first time, just here, you know. We get the Melkeo LNG plant in in the back, uh, and then approaching the Hammerfest city, the northernmost city of the world. In 1897, 
there was a steamship on the harbor. It was December and it was the dark period of, of the year. Then this steamship were testing the electricity lights and then the, the whole harbor was lightened up, you know. And the population thought this, this is marvelous. We have to get this lightning in, in our town. In, in the summertime, they, they decided to make an uh, official letter to the mayor of the city that says that we won't accept one more winter without light in, in, in the street and in the house. And then they built a water gate and a water turbine. So they got electricity for the streets and for the house all the winter. And in fact, Hammerfest was the first city in North Europe that had electricity streetlights. The symbol of this, this is the northern wind. It's windy, yeah. And and this is the symbol of the sun. Yeah. The dog comes out, yeah. Der på fjellet nå, ser dere? Der er sola. Hæ? Hvor er sola? Ser du ikke opp på fjellet der? Der er sånn rødt. Der er sola nå. Hæ? En, to, tre. Og Mariana er her. Og Klokken Kalle er her. Vi er klar for at tida er her. I vår lille klokk har vi humlet her i dag. Og de voksne er her. How does it feel to see the sun after this long, long night? To see the sun? Yeah, yeah it's great. Yeah. I haven't seen the sun since November, so... so it's a good sighting <laughs> to see the sun, of course. You've been living in Hammerfest for a long time? Born and raised in Hammerfest. In the summertime, it's the midnight sun. Uh, the sun is uh, in June, it's up all the time. This rises from the east, goes high and, and sinks back again and starts again. But then you got the sunlight all the time. And it's, it's the greatest time. What is there? North? Mm. To Santa Claus. <laughs> to the North Pole. <laughs> <laughs> what time is it? Fourteen hundred hours. It's getting darker now. 